everyone so i know it's been long overdue but i'm gonna be doing my nails i haven't done my nails in a while like literally i think since march since my engagement and that was six months ago oh wow was that six months may april march march april may june july august september yes it's been exactly six months since i last did my nails and I know y'all probably like, girl, you're not gonna come out here and act like you haven't been MIA, like what's been going on, where you been at, but while I'm doing my nails, I am gonna spill all of the tea, um, but yeah, so I'm actually gonna be doing my nails for my, it's like my wedding, but it's more like an elopement because our big wedding is not until next year. Um, but this year we're actually like legally getting married. Um, and so tomorrow, which I don't know when this video is gonna get posted, but on um, tomorrow, my sister, I don't know who y'all, I just know I gotta be somewhere at a certain time. I don't even know where yet, but they're throwing me, I guess, a bridal shower and so i don't want to be in there without my nails done i don't want to just do some press-ons because that's what i've been doing for all the other events and so i'm finally going to be doing my nails so as i am so so as i am talking to you guys i'm going to be showing you guys of course you know the steps but yeah so we're going to be going through these steps but yes y'all so Ooh, where do I start? Where do I start? So I I think I can't even remember the last time I did a YouTube video. I feel like it hasn't been as long. Like I still been on here like every now and then I've posted a few shorts. And so if you've been keeping up, I feel like, I mean, you would know that like my um, wedding is coming up, but I think it's just so crazy to me only because if you've been following me here on YouTube for a while, like you would know like i mean y'all basically watched me grow up like i've been here on youtube since i was like 21 if not younger and so like now i'm gonna be 27 and i'm gonna be a whole wife like what is going on like what is going on and so to me i feel like sometimes it still feels a little like unreal like i'm really gonna be grown and i don't know if it's just me but I feel like now that I'm going to get married, it's like this is when it's finally hitting me. Like, I'm grown now. Like, I don't know, y'all. But other than that, y'all, I I feel like as far as like business and with the nails, I feel like I honestly needed a break. I was taking a physical and mental break from nails because if you guys didn't know, I actually, um, hold on. So if you guys didn't know, I actually have been doing nails for 12 years in September. Actually, this month on the 12th makes 12 years of me doing nails. And so like I'm tired, y'all, like mentally, physically, like I'm tired. And so, you know, I feel like with me, like everything that I do revolves around nails, whether it's YouTube, you know, like me actually doing clients, me selling products, like everything that I do literally revolves around doing nails. And so I feel like I did hit a stage where I didn't want to see a nail, you know, like literally I don't, I didn't want to do nails. Like I just needed a break. I needed to step back, but then I was stressed out because it's like, okay, so what am I going to do? Like literally everything that I do revolves around nails. And so I honestly don't know, like I've never had a, another job. I've never worked for somebody like, but I just knew that I just needed that mental break because if you guys didn't know, like I've suffered from like really bad anxiety before and I didn't want to start having those anxiety episodes again because if you've ever dealt with anxiety like you know that it's not a good feeling at all like I can't even describe it I wouldn't wish that on I mean I don't have any enemies but I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy is just it's just the worst y'all and so I didn't want to like stress myself out about it and so my fiance, you know, reminded me to just pray about it. 
and that everything was going to work out. And I did, you know, like I prayed about it. I'm like asking God, like, you know, like what's next for me? Like, obviously he knows that everything that I do revolves around nails, but I desperately like need a break. And this is like within the last few months. So, um, or the last year, honestly, the last year. And so I, you know, like, again, you know, just praying and trying to ask God to just guide me and, and just kind of let me know, like, you know, what's my next step. And so that's when the cookie business, and I feel like I talked about this with y'all before, not too long ago, honestly, like I said, I've been on and off here on YouTube, but um, yeah, so like, you know, I prayed about it and then that's when the cookie thing came about. And so basically with the cookie thing, I literally was just making cookies for like my family gatherings. And then I, I was just posting it like I posted it on my Instagram story because of course my cookies look good. And so I posted it on my story and people were like asking, you know, was I selling them? Was I going to sell them? You know, like all that stuff. And and to me, it's like, hmm, you know, like that's not such a bad idea because I feel like I needed a change. I needed something different, even if it was just for a little bit, like I just needed something, y'all, something different, out, completely different from, you know, nails. And so on June 8th, I think I decided to just post a few cookies on the website. I think I started off with 100 cookies only because... This was for me a hobby, something that I just enjoy doing um, because too, like I feel like a part of my like just self-love journey, like just, you know, I'm trying to find things that I enjoy doing, like just me, um, things that I enjoy doing, things that make me happy. And I feel like baking was one of them. I feel like it relaxes me. I feel like it clears my mind just because I have to be like so concentrated Um and so I didn't want it, I didn't want to make it into a job, kind of like with nails. And so I was like, you know, I only do like a hundred cookies and we'll just kind of take it from there, see where it goes. And that was in June, y'all. And now we're in September and now I'm selling 400 cookies every Sunday, which even then, like I still said, um, of course, you know, like throughout the process or journey, like I, I kind of know how many cookies I can add, how many I can handle, how long it'll take me to make a certain amount. And so right now we're like right around 400 cookies on Sundays. Like I restocked my website on Sundays and they sell out literally within the first hour. And so I can only imagine how many cookies would sell if I was to just leave the website fully stocked, like all the time. I honestly don't think that I could keep up with the demand on my own. And so I just kind of been, again, just still doing it to where I'm only making a certain amount that I can handle and I'm still enjoying it. And even though like I do be tired, y'all, I'd be real, real tired, but just only doing what I can handle that way. I don't have another like burnout stage. And honestly, y'all, like if you're in a process of like either you know, maybe you work a regular job and you want to start doing nails or, you know, like you want to start your own business or whatever the case may be, y'all just make sure that you take those mental breaks. I feel like a lot of the time we go all in into different things and then eventually we burn out because we go so hard, you know, that's, I mean, that's with anything, like, I mean, the gym, if you, you know, want to start working out and then you just go to the gym the one day and you literally go in there doing so much and now you don't want to go back the next day. Like it's the same thing. And so I definitely recommend that you take it slow, only do what you can handle. And then as time goes by and you kind of get a little bit more comfortable, then you start adding a little bit more here and there. But I feel like with nails, I've always like just gone all in since I was what, 14 years old. And so I just needed a change and you know like don't get me wrong I still enjoy doing nails I feel like it's still my passion um but I think I've realized that teaching period is my passion I also started um doing like a cookie class because a lot of people were asking me and so I now have my own cookie ebook and I've so far I started it Monday and I've already sold I think maybe about 45 copies of it and so, I don't know, I think when it comes to teaching, like, I feel like I'm just, I have a thing for it. And it just comes to me very naturally. 
And so, um, I feel like if, like, once I start back doing nails, I don't know that I would even start back doing full time, but I feel like I definitely would much rather focus on like the teaching part, whether it's me just doing nails strictly for content or, you know, me doing one-on-one -on -one classes in person or via like Zoom or whatever. I feel like that's more of like what I would want to focus on. But anyways, hold on. So I removed the shine with the 180 sanding band at 5,000 RPMs. And then I went in and kind of nipped around my cuticle areas to get some of that dry skin. And this is what my nails are looking like. So I don't want to do nothing too crazy. I think I want to keep it like really cute and classy. And so if I can find them, I think I want to do like an almond shape. I really been liking that shape here lately. So let me, y'all got stuff everywhere. Let me find them. Okay, I had to go get some, but these are my shorties um in the almond shape and they're just like really short almond nails i didn't want to um i didn't want to have to like use my long stiletto and then cut them down because then that'd be more shaping and falling and so we're just going to be using these and of course all of the products that i use are available on my website oh yeah i'm out of breath i have to run all the way outside to my shed to get these Okay, that's too big. I feel like I already had some of these in here, but I guess not. Okay. And of course, to apply my nail tips, I'm going to be using the KDS glue. Y'all thought this was going to be dry. Like this is literally how long it's been since I did my nails. Holding my finger straight, placing the nail tip, holding the signs. Ah. And I'm not going to leave them this long. But yeah, y'all, so anyways, um, I've been taking that long overdue, I forgot where I left off, I think it was the cookie business, but yeah, so the cookie business has been doing really, really well, um, I've been able to grow my Instagram page to about 25,000 followers, my Facebook page is at, at about 60 some thousand, my TikTok is about 55,000. I've gotten y'all over 500 sales, like, and it's only been, um, or 500 orders. Yeah, same thing. Um, on my website and just from just cookies and it's been doing really good. Like I didn't realize how much people like cookies, I guess like it's crazy, but I don't know what the future for the cookie shop will be. I feel like I'm just going to continue doing what I'm doing right now and just, you know, try to continue growing it. Um, maybe eventually, I don't know y'all, will I have a cookie shop? I mean, uh, uh, yeah, like a cookie shop business. I don't know. Right now I'm just doing everything out of, um, you know, just home and we'll just kind of see where it goes, but I just been enjoying it for a while again. I feel like I just want to, or have to make sure that I don't let it become too much, which sometimes I feel like it does like. I feel like sometimes I get excited and I'm like, okay, maybe I can add a little bit more here and there. And then when the time comes, like I'm like trying to hurry up and get everything done. And now it's like a mess everywhere. And so I just need to, to learn balance and to not burn myself out again, y'all super, super important. Definitely recommend that you take it slow with everything for sure. But, um, but yeah, so now um, I've had a little bit more time to just kind of actually start um, planning for the wedding. Um, again, we decided that we wanted to um, go ahead and get married this year, but then we won't have the big wedding until next year because 
um we are waiting for his brother to be able to attend the wedding next year and so that's one of the reasons why um but yeah this year we're just doing something like really small and intimate i am excited to like show you guys because i've been buying everything off of amazon like the decorations and stuff and so i'm the one that's putting it all together and so i think it's gonna be really really cute i finally i feel like at first i was too stressed to like even think about you know like decorating and having to contact you know the food caters and everything else and so i was almost not necessarily dreading it but i wanted to get to a point where it's like okay like you know what's next or like now it's time to one plan a wedding but next year that's when our big wedding will be and thankfully i don't know if you guys seen my short but we found a venue here in Arkansas, because I think last time I talked to you guys, I was telling you guys that we found a venue that was about two hours from here. And it was nice, like the, it had like the cabins and it, they had like a whole weekend package, but the weekend package, it was really just for the, the venue and then the cabins and it didn't include anything else. And so this new venue that we found, it's like an all-inclusive package. It's super affordable. And literally they plan the wedding, they set up, they clean up. Like all I have to do is just show up in my dress and that's about it. They, they also have cabins. It's also a rental for like the weekend. And so I think it's gonna be really fun. And I think just, me not having to do any of the planning and they take care of everything is what like i'm still gonna of course you know like be able to experience like the planning stages because of course i'm the one that have to tell them like how i want things and all that good stuff but just actually not being so hands-on and just letting them take control like is gonna be a good feeling because i feel like sometimes i just stress too much about stuff so just being able to, on this big day, just be able to breathe and take care of the fun stuff. I think that'll be, that'll be good for me for sure. Like I actually just get to enjoy and just soak everything in. And I definitely look forward to that because again, I'm tired of stressing y'all. And then what else? What's been going on? Oh, the building. So uh, I did post about um, me buying a commercial property. This was like last year in October, y'all. Like I actually, I literally closed on that property last year in October. It's about to be a year. This is September. So next month, it's about to be a year. And we're still, well, we're done with it as far as like, you know, all of the rem remodeling, remodeling, there you go, remodeling, we're done with that, been done with that, like, right now, we were just struggling with, like, getting uh, permits from the city, like, y'all, they definitely gave us the runaround and just making us wait, and I feel like they was messing with us, y'all, like, I feel like, I don't know, it's like, they don't want us to to start no business they always want to emphasize small business this small business that and then when it really comes down to it it's like they make us wait the longest they give us the hardest time because i literally applied for that permit like earlier this year y'all and we just got it two days ago y'all and so finally we'll be able to now look forward to getting that back and running again or running period Okay, so I have the nail tips on. And so now we're going to go in and cut them down. And like I said, y'all, I don't want them that long. Oh, should I do? Now I kind of want a coffin. I don't know. Hold on. I don't want to cut them too short because I don't want them to look like little baby claws. But with me making cookies, I definitely don't want them that long. But yeah, and then after the, we have so much going on this September, y'all. Like I said, so tomorrow is my bridal show, I think. Whatever they're doing, that's a surprise. Um, and then we have my bonus baby, um, not soccer, but t-ball game and birthday parties and another birthday party and just a whole bunch. And so... 
we're just trying to stay organized and not forget anything. Um, I literally need to get a calendar, put it on the refrigerator, and write down all of my appointments. I also haven't gotten my lashes done since November, y'all, since my birthday. And I made an appointment today. Um, I have an appointment to get my hair colored or retouched. I want to make an appointment to, well, I guess I'm going to wait till I go to her to see if she can do it. But I do want to get, of course, my hair styled because, again, this is going to just be the small ceremony this year. So more like an elopement ceremony. And then next year, the actual wedding. I don't know. I feel like we make it so complicated. But I know we do a lot nowadays. But um, but yeah, I, wanna, I, I wanted to save a little money there and just kind of do my hair myself. But now I'm like, ugh. Like, am I really going to feel like it? But, okay, so I cut my nails. I trimmed the sides. And so now I'm going to start shaping them into that almond shape. Going in on the sides, making sure that my file is nice and straight against the file. I mean, against the nail. Just going back and forth. And then just rounding the tip off. Because I don't want them too pointy. Just like that. So you guys see how with these little nail tips, you really don't have, like I could have left them the length that they were and they're already like that perfect almond shape, but I just didn't want them that long. Oh, I feel like this one's crooked, y'all. Maybe we can fix it. Okay, it's not too bad. I just had to make sure that I didn't file too much on that one side, but I feel like that's good. But yeah, other than that, um, I feel like I probably should have did this live so you guys could ask questions and because I feel like I'd be forgetting stuff. But I feel like I pretty much done told y'all everything so far. <laughs> So maybe, maybe I can just speed up the video a little bit. Alrighty, so after I finish reshaping or shaping my nails, I'm going to go back in with my e-file. I'm going to use it at 5,000 or, or 6,000 RPMs. And we're just going to go in and just kind of blend the nail tip right in the middle where the natural nail and the tip meet. And this is really optional. I know these tips aren't like super, super thick, but... I feel like it just kind of helps the acrylic lay down a little bit better in the middle and it doesn't look bulky or anything. Just like that. So literally just going in and filing that nail tip in the middle. And I know some people like to go in and just file the whole tip because they say that it helps the acrylic stay on better but honestly i used to didn't do it and i never had any problems at all with like my acrylic not staying on the tip or lifting off the tip or anything like that so definitely you know if you want to just play it safe and do it that's completely fine but if not that's fine too okay just dusting them off and then next okay so next we're gonna go in with the dehydrator and the primer the dehydrator is gonna get rid of any oils that are left on the nail and then the primer is going to help the acrylic adhere better to the natural nail you do need both of them that way you know you don't get any lifting but just a reminder that lifting comes from a number of things it could be from not prepping the nail correctly from not using a dehydrator and primer from not filing your nails properly from not using the correct liquid to powder ratio it can come from a number of things so just definitely keep that in mind going in with the primer Thank you. 
Alrighty, so up next, we're gonna be doing the acrylic. And I don't know, I don't know what color I wanna do. Like, do I wanna do a nude? Do I wanna do my uh, pretty in pink? So I'm gonna show you guys, I'm just gonna swatch both of them and then we'll take it from there. And then also I went and got me a new brush. This is the number 14 Get No 32 brush. Y'all just love a new brush. They're so perfect. And of course, we're gonna be using the NC Liquid Monomer. And of course, we're gonna go in with, we're gonna use my, what is this? My new bottles have the name on them, my old ones don't. This is the rose. So we're gonna be using the rose odor out drops. You just do about three drops into your monomer and it's gonna help the, it's gonna help give the monomer a better scent other than just the monomer smell. So it's not gonna completely get rid of the odor, it's just going to minimize the smell. But for my new brush, what I'm gonna do is just dip it into my monomer to kind of break up that starch and that glue that keeps all of the bristles together. So just letting it kind of just sit in my monomer to just kind of let it soak a little bit and then wiping it off on the paper towel. I don't like to go in. I've seen where people use a credit card and they just kind of scrape it off. But y'all, I don't know about y'all, but I'm not going to mess up my brush. So I'd rather just kind of let the monomer do its job and just kind of clean it off for me on its own because just a reminder your brush is your most important tool if you don't have a good brush y'all like it's gonna it's gonna be hard for you to apply the product even if you have like really high quality product if you're not using a good brush it's definitely not gonna work out for you the way that you want it to to work out so definitely keep that in mind I do have this brush in a number 14, which again is this one. They are crimped. So as you guys can see straight out the package is nice and flat. And then I also have a number 12, which is slightly smaller than this one. But um, let's see. Okay, so I have pretty in pink right here, which this one is going to be more of like an intense pink. And I like it, but I don't know how like... Like I said, this is for like my bridal shower, I think. So this is the intense pink and then, I mean not intense pink. This is the pretty in pink, which is basically an intense pink. And then another option would be, maybe I'll do three, Pinkalicious. This one is also pink, but just like a softer pink. That's kind of cute or i think this is real nude so real nude this one is going to be of course more of a nude maybe i'll do the one in the middle maybe pinkalicious i don't think that i've ever done that color on myself hopefully you guys can see the colors here so this is pretty in pink pinkalicious and real nude i've had pretty in pink and i've had real nude so i think i'm gonna do pink alicious it looks like a, a pretty color not too you know not doing too too much so because of course the ring gotta stand out so let's see i don't think i'm gonna do an ombre or do i mm. well no i did an ombre for the engagement i think i'm just gonna do full pink alicious on all of them and then maybe we can go in and do some some lines. I don't think that I want any rhinestones because I need the ring to stand out, not the nails. So I'm just going to go in with Pinkalicious. And as always, placing my first bead right in the middle where the nail tip and the tip meet. Patting it down. Y'all, literally it's been so long since I've done this. And just very gently patting the acrylic, kind of bringing it down towards the tip. Wiping the sides. Pat, 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 pat. And being very gentle, y'all. You don't want to make, or you want to make sure that you're not brushing your acrylic too hard. Because you're basically just going to be brushing it off the nail. 
making sure that we wipe the sides off that way we don't have any acrylic sliding off the sides or also that way we're able to keep our almond shape and then we won't have so much falling to do at the end so just like that nice and smooth yeah so buttery so pretty so next i'm gonna go in and do because i already have a nice thickness at the tip i'm just gonna go in with a very small ball and this is just so we get a nice thickness at the tip and just a reminder that for your nails, you just want to make sure that your nails are about as thick as a credit card. You don't want your nails like super, super thick, literally just enough to where, of course, it's not going to break off. But I don't I hate to see like super thick nails like they just make me cringe. But uh, of course, focusing on that apex because that's really where your nail gets its strength from. So next, we're going to go in and place that bead closer to the cuticle area. And because we already have a nice thickness at the tip, we want to make sure that this tip, we blend it down, but we just worry about it staying more in this apex area because, again, that's where our nail gets its strength from. And if you get any product on the skin, just go ahead and wipe it off immediately before it dries off or dries up. Alrighty, so I have a little gap on the side, so I'm just going in and filling it in. And then whenever you clean the sides off, just go in with, make sure that your brush is nice and flat and clean. And just go in with the very tip and just go right along the cuticle area. Making sure that you're not pushing down, but literally just wiping off. Alrighty, y'all. So just like that, nice and smooth. We have a nice apex right here, not too thick or thin, and it's nice and smooth. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on all of them. So again, placing that first bead right in the middle where the natural nail and the tip meet, patting the acrylic down and start moving it to where we want it to go which in this case the nail tip wiping the sides and remember that whenever you're patting you're super super gentle like you're literally just y'all like feathering the acrylic even when you're wiping it's more of like a feathering motion because if you go in there and just drag it you're going to be wiping all of the acrylic off the nail because as you're working, you really don't even want a lot of product on your paper towel. As you guys can see, like that's all I have on my paper towel after doing one nail. And so you don't want to look, y'all, these products get, ex get expensive. So we want to make sure that we're working smarter and not harder. And we don't want to be wasteful either. just like that so i'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing on all of them and then i'll be back
Alrighty, y'all. So I am done applying the acrylic on all of my nails. I feel like it took me a little bit longer just because I haven't done my nails in so long. But now we're going to go in with the 180, not 180, but the 8080 hand file. And we're going to go in and reshape the nails. Obviously, we don't have much falling to do because they're already that nice almond shape. But as you guys can see, we have those little rough edges on the bottom of the nails. So we just have to go in and redefine that shape. So same thing as we did earlier, just going in on the sides. And then if you kind of hold your file at about a 45 degree angle, you're able to get right underneath the nail to get those little rough edges off. And same thing, just rounding the tip off. Just like that. Nice and almondy. So now we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing on all of them. And y'all, this finger right here is bothering me because I feel like I left it just a tad bit shorter than all of them. But I feel like it's okay. It's really not, maybe I'm just overthinking it, but it's not bad. Alrighty y'all, so now I'm just going in with my 180 sending band. I usually would use my tapered drill bit, but since I really don't have much filing to do, I'm just going to do everything with this one. Of course, as you're doing it, making sure that you're getting around that cuticle area really good to make sure that you get no lifting whatsoever. And of course, as you're working, making sure that you're looking at the nail from different angles that way you know that everything is nice and smooth just like that and as you guys can see while i'm doing this i'm holding my fingers well this one i put my pinky right there for this one i usually just do it like on the side that way i have full control of my e-file at all times and that way my drill is not just like all over the place but i have stability and i control where my file goes at all times so i go from the right side work my way all the way around to the left side and when I'm doing the cuticle area, I'm holding my um, A5 at about a 45 degree angle, just going around, going back and forth. And then also just following the rest of the nail with like the middle of the drill bit. Or the sending band.
Alrighty, so I finished filing all of my nails. So now we're going to go in and just buff them. And this is going to get rid of any of the scratches left on the nails from the hand file or the e-file. So for my nails, I want something like really simple, but still really cute and like classy. And so I don't want to do just a French tip because I know I'm not going to be able to do it on this hand. And so we're going to do kind of like a French tip, but with a little twist. So it's not going to be perfect, but that's the point. Like it's like a little, you know, like a French tip with a little curve to it. Alrighty y'all, so here is the final look. I really like that pinkish acrylic that I used and the white French tip definitely was different, but I really liked it. So as always, I hope you guys enjoyed and thank you for watching.